Now, before we start today's video, I gotta thank my boys at American Biker. Big thanks to them here in Latson, South Carolina. If you need anything from them, maybe a new Indian or a used Harley or something else, come talk to Rob at American Biker. Again, big thanks to them for allowing me to come out to do the video to show y'all the Chieftain versus Street Glide. Let's go ahead and get into it. This bike has a lot to offer. We're gonna hop on the Street Glide, and after the Street Glide, I'm gonna tell you these differences, all these differences between the two bikes, which one I like the best. Let's go ahead and gear up for the Street Glide. All right, two heavyweight cruisers back here on the channel. Today, we're gonna compare these bikes side by side. We have the Street Glide versus the Chieftain. Now, let me go ahead and throw this out here. This is a 2017 Street Glide with the Milwaukee 8. It's got the 107. This is a 2022 Indian Chieftain. So yes, there's a five year gap here between these two. And there's gonna be some things I talk about in the new Street Glides to compensate because I don't have two brand new bikes here. But what I really wanna focus on is the main features, things that regardless if you get a 17 or a 22 Harley or a 22 Indian Chieftain are going to make the difference to you. Now this of course is just my opinion. If you're looking at getting one of these two bikes, don't worry, at the end I'm gonna tell you which one I think is the best and why. Let's go ahead and get started. Now we're gonna talk about the big differences here. There's five things I'm really looking at. If there's anything that I missed, I have dedicated reviews on both motorcycles so you can check those out as well. While you're here, consider subscribing and hitting your notifications so you never miss a video from me. But the five things I'm looking at, aesthetics, the way they ride, features that make them unique, how they feel as a rider with you in the seat, and I'm gonna take y'all on the road with me. And then I'm also gonna give you the value with each motorcycle and what they offer you in some of the other motorcycles in the Indian and Harley lineup as far as the, the Chieftain and the Street Glide. And like I said, those five things are gonna be the core of today's video. Let's go ahead and start with the 2022 Indian Chieftain. Now you'd be a fool to think that the Indian Chieftain doesn't take some of its inspiration from the Street Glide. Of course, this bat wing style fairing. There's only so many ways you could do this fairing with aerodynamics and everything else, but they've changed it up enough. So if we start up here in the front, you will see that they do not have as much of a concave in here, kind of more of an aerodynamic look where it takes a little bit of attention away from the front headlight, where the Street Glide is really cut out in here. They've kind of left more of this and added different body lines in here. Of course, you have this split right here to give you a little bit more uh, equilibrium, if you will, and keep the air flowing through here. LEDs all the way around. I appreciate this. It's a brand new bike. LED headlight, turn signals, front and rear, amazing. When we look down here, you can see this fender. It kind of comes around and it makes one nice little swoop back towards the motor or the oil cooler back there. And then of course the front bonnet, the Indian head, on the fender to finish it off. Of course, you have ABS on the Chieftain Limiteds. You can see the wheel design looks really sharp and a lot of chrome and polished stainless steel type of look. Now, of course, you have the Dark Horse as well, which is gonna give you more of a blacked out appearance. So they have both. The Chieftain Limited here is mainly gonna use traditional chrome and stainless steel. Coming back here, you have a five and a half gallon tank. This has the 116 Thunderstroke, which is oil and air cooled. And of course, this thing is coming in at like 830 pounds with all of the fluids in there. On the center console here, very nice looking. You have a little leather strip right here that connects the seat to the console area. And you actually have lockable bags on this bike. Not only can you lock them from the key fob, but you can also lock them directly from the motorcycle on the console. Very cool. This is one of the areas that Indian does a better job. And this is in the seat. You have this little backrest that's built in just like the Harley. But as far as the premium look on it, it kind of has like little ventilated area right there in the middle, looks really good. And then the passenger pillion offers that same look, looks really good. It doesn't look like it has a ton of cushion, 
but it actually is pretty nice and plush whenever you sit in it. So really nice job there. American Biker added the sissy bar too, by the way. To round off the aesthetics, you have these panels that cover pretty much the whole side of this. You have your passenger pegs, of course. They redesigned the bag some years ago. These things look so much better. There's like 18 gallons of storage that you can do in these things. There's a port in here, a charger that you can use in this one right here. And if I unlock the bags, they open up nice and easy, pretty much one touch, and then you just kind of close them firmly uh, just like that. So really good. You can see your fender wraps down and around, tail lights, license plate cover, all of that good stuff. So that pretty much knocks out the aesthetics on the Chieftain. Let's move to the Street Glide. If we look at the Street Glide again, you'll see how they taper the fairing to come down to where the headlight and stuff is the centerpiece, if you will, of the headlight. Much more of a protrusion here because of these cutouts. The split stream right here underneath the windshield, low profile windshield on the Indian Chieftain, you can actually move it up and down. We'll talk about that when we get on the road. Fender again, wraps around, looks very similar, except it doesn't have that little sweep. It just kind of ends and it just kind of wraps around the tire, right? So that's pretty much it there. This one is a little bit older, so you can see some of the polished areas and some of the chrome doesn't look as good, but that's, that's going to happen over time. One thing I will say is that the chrome and everything on this bike, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it looks absolutely beautiful when it's new. Both bikes have crash bars. The Chieftain is gonna come with those unless you get the regular Chieftain, which it won't. Harley actually has a six gallon tank. Now here's one thing that's interesting is the way that they do the mirrors on the Street Glide, this is, this is a great design because they actually have it attached to the inner part of the fairing here. So nothing, nothing really sticks up. Now these are aftermarket. The previous owner added them it's because he's got the taller T-bars on here. So it's kind of hard to see when they're like that. So he kind of had to add those. But regardless, I like the way that Harley does those. If you add taller handlebars, it's going to affect that. Whereas on the Chieftain, they have them up on the bars themselves. So no matter what size bar you do or whatever, that really isn't going to change. But aesthetically, I like it better on the Street Glide. It's just a cleaner look. Like I said, six gallon tank here. Both tank designs are really similar and it's a really nice wide tank. It's gonna give you a lot of capacity. So when you're doing long touring trips, you don't have to stop nearly as often. Center console leads you up to your gas tank and where you can actually fill up. On the Indian Chieftain, you actually have your uh, gas cap on the right hand side of the tank where the center console houses your buttons for your bags and all that good stuff. One big area in aesthetics you're going to notice is in the motor. Now this one has the 107. The new ones of course you have the 114. You even have the ability to go with the 117 if you go with like the Street Glide ST. Okay. Regardless, let's just say 114 is pretty much the standard now and 116. Both are oil and air cooled. I'm gonna talk about something on the Indian Chieftain here in a minute though that wakes the bike up just a little bit. Another area of aesthetics before we move on is the way the engines actually look. So you can see it's more open in here. You can see more of that rear cylinder. Of course you have your air cleaner on this side. It's on the other side of the Indian, but you have more of a squared off or box look on the rocker covers on the Harley, where it's more of rounded jugs on the Indian. Of course, that's gonna be up to you. You know, that is purely aesthetics. There's not much difference other than that when it comes to the motors, the size, all that good stuff. Neither Indian nor Harley does a heel shifter straight from the factory anymore, by the way. That's kind of a bummer. And then if we come back to the bags on the Street Glide, these are not as squared off as they used to be, but still a little bit more squared off than what you're gonna see on the Indian. The Indian has more of a rounded look, although these bags have changed wildly on both bikes over the years. Both of them look really good, just very different. Where this one has one touch lashes that kind of opens up like this. The latch of course is on top on the Indian and just a totally different aesthetic to it. Both of them are gonna have two into one into two pipes and of course your tail lights brake light combo on both motorcycles 
and then license plate right there, docking station, so you can put a sissy bar on this motorcycle as well. Antennas, a little bit different spots. So these bikes can be really hard to choose from if you're looking at one of these to buy for yourself because of how similar they look. But the devil is definitely in the details on these motorcycles as you're about to find out. And then the seat on the Street Glide, this has pretty much been the standard seat on the street and road glide for a while, has more of a wider appearance, although they've trimmed this down from previous models uh, in the past. It definitely is better for shorter riders now, but at the same time, it's still much wider in this area than it is on the Indian. And these seats look more comfortable than the Indian. The Indian looks better than the Harley, and yet the Indian is more comfortable than the Harley is. So take that for what it's worth. Seats are seats, pretty much they're like exhaust. They get changed as soon as somebody buys the bike almost. So passenger pillion right there. Of course they do have a better peg on the street glide, for your passenger at least. Floorboards are kind of the same but for your passenger, they get a little bit more foot room there. It's not much, but it's just a sink, just pegs on the Indian there, okay? So definitely not as premium looking as the Harley Street Glide. Now, we've covered a lot, but we have not talked about the specialized details that really make these bikes so much different to ride. It, it really is a huge difference. So now it's time to put my helmet on we're going to talk about some of those differences. We're going to start with the Indian, then I'm going to ride the Harley, get a back-to-back -back perspective, and you're going to see how truly different both of these bikes are. Let me go ahead and grab my helmet. All righty. 2022 Indian Chieftain Elite 17 Harley Street Glide. Two bagger bros. Um, still plastic on this bike it's brand new and your boy is gonna ride it for the first time this is for the people dude this is what I do that's what I'm gonna do all right swing a leg over this bad boy oh dude instantly instantly notice how much lighter these are off the kickstand and how much harder it is to reach the kickstand. <laughs> um, one thing you'll notice, the seat height on the Chieftain is actually uh, shorter. So I can completely flat foot this bike, no issues. No need to change the seat if I didn't want to. Power, fuel pump, it's already, it was already on, start it up. Cable clutch, love it. They did go to the cable clutch on the new ones too, on the new Harleys, from the hydraulic clutch, which was annoying. Oh, no heel shifter. That always gets me, dude. We are off, boys. All right, 2022 Indian Chieftain. Fix the camera here a little bit. There we go. What a beautiful motorcycle. I got it in sport mode, and that's one thing instantly I love about this motorcycle is the different modes on the bike. You have touring, you have standard, you have sport. And the sport really wakes this bike up, man. The throttle at least. So it's kind of cool, man. If you just feel like chilling and you just want to, you know, you're just cruising, whatever, have it in touring mode. Or if you want to rip around, put it in sport mode. So it is, uh, it is very cool. And those things do make a big difference on this bike. Those are the little details that we're going to cover that you're going to see it. Like, okay, now I get it. The dash feels very close to me feels very close you're about to see how the street glide looks but it definitely is further away on the street glide but it feels very close so if I need to get to anything on the screen I'm not reaching way out here I'm just right here I'm just right here it has physical buttons along with the ability to change stuff on the screen as well there is some kind of light over here 
I want to say that's TPM mess, but I could be wrong. Not really sure. I have to ask him when I get back to the shop. I'm not going to focus on that too much. You have a digital fuel gauge over here. You see an analog speedometer, analog tachometer, gauges on both sides with the screen in the middle. I got to know what their thinking was. Them and Harley. Like, what's the thinking on taking the heel shifter away? I don't get it. Oh yeah, love the power of this bike dude, the Thunderstroke 116 is where it's at, now we're just cruising, 6 speed transmission, 5.5 gallon tank, we kind of already covered most of that stuff, if you want to change anything, this screen does work with gloves, let's say I were to change this to standard mode for the throttle response, it's only going to change once you come to a stop, okay, so you can change the screen brightness and all that, you know, settings. We're gonna do most of the stuff when we're not driving, right? But just wanted to show you some of those things that you can quickly change through when you're on the road. You have your miles range, your miles per hour, which you could, you know, digital as well. It's kind of nice, you have a little compass down there. TPMS down at the bottom shows your miles remaining. Uh, miles on your oil life. Of course, this being a brand new bike, you want to change it after, you know, 500 miles or so. Now, I'm getting a lot of air that's hitting me in the helmet. I wish there was some way I could change this. Oh, what? It, what is this? Oh, I can change it. Holy crap. That's right, adjustable windshield. That is a beautiful option on this motorcycle, man. The ability to change that and have it as free flowing. You can hit it twice up or down and it's gonna drop all the way down or up. Or if I want a little bit more protection, boom, there you go. I don't imagine either one of these bikes, that neither one of these bikes are gonna sound good in their stock configuration. So a set of Reinhardt's is much needed on either one of these motorcycles. Does have a good tone though when you hit the throttle, so I know this thing will sound amazing with a set of pipes. That cable clutch is where it's at too, man. So easy to engage. This is where it pulls, right here. So this is all the way in. That's where it pulls. That's where it pulls. Very nice. So we got our horn, we got a high beam, low beam, turn signals on the one side music controls right there start stop cruise control windshield adjustment here we do have a port right here and this is where the power button used to be phone connectivity you can pull up your so current ride i don't really know what this is i haven't i guess it tells you how far you've gone and all that good stuff navigation right so you can pinch to zoom well, yep, pinch to zoom. Uh, you can also use the buttons here, or you can use the button here. So kind of cool, you can change that on the fly and you don't have to mess with all this kind of stuff. Uh, phone, tunes, we're not gonna hook up any radio, we don't want copyright. So, one thing you're gonna notice, the speakers are not as open as they are on the Street Glide. They're actually super close to the handlebars there so it looks a little cluttered up in this area but I do like the fact how everything is just right here where you can get to it again a faux gas cap real gas cap chrome the bars come back far enough my feet out out in front of me where this feels super natural as far as the riding position neutral boom very similar to a metric feel on the bike when it comes to the way it shifts a little bit a little bit of a clunk kind of like a harley uh, up here you have a cord we have the fob so yeah a little storage thing there seat feels nice and comfy the floorboards are massive you can see your highway bars right there
116, man, I'm telling you. It is awesome. Now I'm gonna see how well this windshield works on the highway. I wanna see what kind of air you actually get with it all the way down and all the way up. This bike feels so light, dude. I don't know how they do it, man. They just get an 830 pound motorcycle to seriously feel this light. It is impressive, dude. All right. We're in fifth gear. One of those little details too is when you pull in the clutch, your gear indicator is not gonna go away. So that's kind of cool. So, windshield all the way up. Little bit of vibration in my feet. Let's bring that all the way down, see what it's like. Wow. That's pretty significant, especially on my head, the way it's buffeted in and moving my head around. in the sixth gear. This thing has a bunch of power, dude. And it's kind of like the street glide in that respect, man. As opposed to the road glide, you're going to get some side to side. It's going to take a little bit more effort for you, the rider, to ride this on the interstate on at higher speeds now that's not necessarily you know a, a deal killer but just know that your challenger and your road glide are smoother bikes on the interstate the more aerodynamic they just are dude with that flatness of the of the indian chieftain fairing and of the street glide some of that wind tends to to move it around I'll tell you, we're, what, 3,100 RPMs going 80 miles an hour. This motor is barely working, dude. And I'm in sixth gear. I just open it up. If I need to pass, boom. This thing's got loads of power and torque. So you got the mono shock under the seat. So that does a really good job uh, as far as the ride comfort, right? It's not super bouncy. Uh, it feels really comfortable. The seat is comfortable. It looks good crash bars tpms sensor again i'll ask them about this light i'm fairly certain that's tpms sensors they may need to be relearned or something this is a brand new bike so i have no i no idea what needs to happen there but i'll ask them about that and i think i would keep this thing in sport mode pretty much all the time it's a lot of fun to ride in sport mode dude let's pull it down i'll put it in standard while we're here you're not going to be able to see that much of a difference or feel it, but I will. This bike has a lot to offer. We're going to hop on the street glide. And after the street glide, I'm going to tell you these differences, all these differences between the two bikes, which one I like the best. Let's go ahead and gear up for the street glide. All right. So now we come to the street glide. If you are somebody that's looking at these bikes, maybe you have a place like this, or maybe you come here, whatever. Ride them back to back. That way you get an idea. Now this isn't a totally fair comparison. This feels lighter than a typical street glide. And I think a lot of it has to do with the leverage that you get on the bars. Now, as opposed to having a power button and all that kind of stuff, you turn the key here, keyless ignition, of course. We're going to talk a little bit about this, but keep in mind, this is the old boom system. You now have the updated GTS, which is light years above this, okay? And it's way faster. You don't really get things like, like this on the new one. But regardless, while that's doing its thing, reaching the kickstand is easier 
on the Harley than it is on the Chieftain. Again, it's small details. Start it up, boom, fuel pump there, right? Look how long that took. This old system sucks. It sucks. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh God. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot how bad this thing is. Oh, dude, no way. Okay, so we're not even really going to compare that, okay? We're not going to compare that. We're not even really going to compare radios. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. All right, let's start it up. This bike only has 16,000 miles. All right, first gear. I like these bars, by the way. Hydraulic clutches drive me nuts. I hate them, dude. All right, Harley Street Glide 2017. Unfortunately, I don't have a new, new one to show you, but don't focus on the wrong parts of the story. I've already talked about how you can upgrade the radio, it's much better than this one here. All of that good stuff. both torquey machines plenty of power this 107 don't get it twisted dude this thing is pretty freaking awesome slightly modified street glide here of course but the point still remains 114 in the new ones 116 in the new chieftains pretty freaking close now you'll notice my my screen where I have two gauges on both sides of the screen on the Chieftain I got four gauges up here I love this dash looks incredible it doesn't look forced it doesn't look cluttered wide open speakers all of that kind of stuff the problem I have I'm a shorter rider 5.7 by the way and the problem I have is sometimes trying to reach I, I can reach it don't get me wrong but I'm I'm more and again, this is a small detail, so I know people are gonna be like, oh my God, you have to reach an extra inch. <laughs> but I'm just saying, these are the kinds of things that, I, that I'm trying to get at. I mean, there's very small, small details here to point out. But yes, it's more of a reach to get to your controls. Some people don't like the cluttered look or the, not really forced, but the, the more forward look of the Indian. That's fine, but I'm just telling you, this looks cleaner to me, but at the same time, functionality wise, it's easier to get to on the Indian. Now, one thing I never understood, even with the new street glides and the new Harleys, you have to go up to the CVO in order to get your hard locking bags or your, your, your bags that you can lock from a key fob. They still don't do that. You have a stupid little barrel key I don't know why they do that. I hate it, but you, you don't get that unless you go with the CVO. It's kind of kind of doo-doo, if you ask me. So something I didn't bring up when I was doing the review, but I thought about later, is the TPMS. So the CVOs come with TPMS, and then in 2020, bikes equipped with RDRS, which is the Reflex Rider Defense System, have TPMS included. That's like a $1,000 add-on, right? So that makes it pretty much fair. But when you look at the Chieftain Elite, which is 33,000, and the Chieftain Limited, which is 28,000, on the Elite, you actually get speakers in the bags, you get the adaptive uh, LED headlight, you get the curved power adjustable windshield, lockable bags, all this kind of stuff, TPMS, of course. And in the Limited, you get the TPMS, and you know, minus some of those features, you don't get the speakers in the bags. But even at $33,000, you have to go up to the CVO, which is 42,000 plus, in order to get some of these features, speakers in the bags, hard lockable bags, or, or remote lockable bags, I should say. So it really is quite a broad contrast when you look at the two companies and the way they approach their custom baggers with a $10,000 plus minus, maybe a little difference there, that is pretty significant. 
Now you don't have to go all the way up to 42,000 to get TPMS, but still to get the lockable bags and the other stuff I talked about, you do. I don't want to get too far off in the weeds here because I am talking about different bikes, but it just gives you a little bit more perspective when we start talking about these five big differences where in my opinion, the Chieftain Limited and the Elite, to be honest with you, give you more bang for your buck. If you go with the Special, which is the only way I would go when it comes to these Harleys, Street Glide or Road Glide, it needs to be more special than what it is. Not just blacked out, not just a better screen. So you got five big things there that make the Chieftain a better bang for its buck. Now I cannot fully flat foot this bike, although I'm pretty close. Um, moving the bikes around, the Harley feel, you feel all of that weight. Small detail, but you know, something I wanted to talk about. Uh, seating position, it's not really fair because I got these T-bars. It's a pretty comfortable position either way. Um, I find that the Indian stock for stock, because I used to have a 19 Special, so I know, I know, you know, what that seating position is like. Stock for stock, I think the Indian's a little bit more comfortable, but I want to say the bars come back a little bit further to you as well. This thing is a ripper man the 17 i'm i'm really i've ridden a few few 107s now and they they are freaking awesome there's a there's a pretty significant difference from the 114 to 107 but the 107 is definitely still awesome dude this bike just feels more old school to me it doesn't have all the extras that we talked about on the Indian, even though there's a lot of tech in this bike, you know, ABS, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think 17, they actually introduced the, the linked ABS as well. Some people like that, some people don't. By the way, this heel shifter is amazing. I like the turn signals, by the way, one on each bar. Much prefer that. Just like the Indian, you know, 75, 2900 RPM, the motor's barely working. This one too has a little bit of movement, but it doesn't feel, I don't want to say unstable, but as shaky. This, this trailer, I don't know why they're smoking, but they're making me kind of nervous. I think I'm old. Go ahead and get over here and back off from this guy. But it doesn't feel as unstable to me. I hate to use that word because the Chieftain didn't feel unstable. It just doesn't feel like it moves as much as the Chieftain did. Right? And I don't get the vibration like I got on the Chieftain on the street glide. So a little bit smoother in that regard, I think. I'm just cooling it a little bit. That trailer's making me nervous up there. I don't know what's smoking on him. I don't know if it smells for sure like a tire, but I'm good on that. Seating position on both bikes feels really natural, man. There's those small differences and the things that you get with the, oh, pieces of freaking rubber coming down the road from this guy. Yeah, that tire's coming apart, dude. Hello. 
over, my dude. I think he's trying to get to that rest area. Power is not an issue on either bike. Man, this is so freaking close. It may just come down to one or two more, one or two features. I mean, honestly. And I, I really, I, I thought that from the very beginning, before I even started the video, and I still think that they're so close, man. Let's get back to the shop. Let me get my thoughts together here. So now that I've ridden both, let me say there's four big things that the Chieftain, although for a little bit more money, is going to give you. The ability to lock the bags either from the key fob or from the console. The ability to adjust your windshield. TPMS sensors and sport modes. All of those things, and I want to say, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say in the neighborhood of a thousand bucks more for the for the indian than the harley that's a lot of things for a thousand bucks just the sport mode just the ability to change ride modes is worth it so we talked about aesthetics i prefer the street glide a little bit although the chieftain especially the dark horse looks incredible incredible so don't get me wrong slight nod goes to the harley there everything just looks incredible on that motorcycle the power tie they're both equally awesome bunch of torque loads of power load them up storage passenger whatever you're gonna have plenty of power and plenty of upgrades especially on harley so power is even aftermarket sport definitely goes to harley the way they ride these things feel very different now i will say shifting feel throttle <sighs> overall the indian seems a little bit smoother where it refines the clunkiness that you sometimes get with the harley and it's kind of weird because you hear most of the engine on the on the indian you hear a lot of the exhaust like that tinny type of exhaust on stock harley so it's weird there but once i got on the highway this felt more stable to me than this now they both kind of have some buffeting because of the fairings but the harley felt a little bit more stable on the highway i got a little bit of vibration in through my feet on the chieftain where i didn't on the harley <sighs> take it for what it's worth but the harley feels a little bit more stable and a little bit more i guess comfortable i guess on a long ride maybe not as much work has to be put in although they both are going to require more work than like a road glide okay so slight nod to the harley there value so i think the indian gives you more for your money you know they now all have all leds i'm almost 100 percent positive that the street glide still does halogen turn signals even on the new new ones i know they do the led now finally on the headlights so i'm going to give the nod to indian on value which one would i personally buy man You know, I don't change a whole lot on my motorcycle. Me and Rob were talking about this before the video. And he does a lot of, he likes to do a lot of tinkering and a lot of adjustments. I don't really do that. You know, if I have exhaust, I have a, a good seat, you know, maybe a high airflow intake, you know, maybe a new set of bars, something like that. I'm pretty much good, uh, obviously LED lighting. Um, then I'm pretty much good. So that wouldn't detract me from Indian because the aftermarket support is so much better on Harley. That would not detract me. Mm. I think because of the aesthetics and the way this thing rides on the highway, I take this because that's a big reason I chose the Road Glide. Not only did I just want a different bike to show y'all and kind of, you know, do comparisons with, but it's also a more stable motorcycle and this is more stable on the highway than this but you get so much more money so much more bang for your buck in the indian that's a tough choice i think i would go 
aesthetics and the ride the ride is so good on the street glide oh man I don't know I, I, I think that's the way I would go <laughs> I hate to end it like that man but I really want to hear what your opinion of these two bikes if you own one or the other or you're looking at getting one I hope that this video helped you and shed some light the difference is man they're 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 not much but they're big enough to make a difference and I hope that I was able to give you some information so you can make an informed decision maybe I just justified your own purchase whatever the case may be leave me a comment down below if you have any ideas for videos any bikes you want to see compared let me know big thanks to you guys for watching if you'd like to support me you can do that for one freaking dollar on patreon link down below see you in the next one and as always hold the rubber side down